Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today we're going to bring here the third episode of the series where I teach you guys how to build a full stack web application using React, Node.js and MySQL. Before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it because it will push my video to more people and it will push me to continue posting more because I really like posting these videos and I would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like. Now let's get into the tutorial. In the previous two episodes, um, we were able to build our like start building our backend, we, we created two endpoints over here, a get request, which allows us to get a list of all the different posts that people made in, in our application, and a post request, which um, allows which basically creates and add new posts. And a post, as you guys remember, it's basically just an object containing a title, a post text and a username for the user who actually um, like w the user who, po who wrote the post, right. So what we're going to be building in this video is we're going to start by creating our react part of our application, right? So we're going to start by uh, actually moving to like moving away from our backend right now, and just moving into the client. So to do that, we just need to change our directory to so to do that, we need just need to change the directory to the client folder. And now we're inside of our client folder. And for that, we actually need to create um, the react application by running the command um, npx create react app like this, right? Um, this is a command that we, we use um, to basically generate a boilerplate, uh, an application that will already contain all the configuration files and everything that we need for react to work. And to say that we want to generate this application inside of the client folder, we just put a dot at the end and press enter. And this should start creating our react app inside of our folder. I'll be back in a second when this finishes downloading. Okay, guys, so as you can see, um, we generated all the files we needed. Um, this is basically what comes with whenever you run the create react app command. And I'm just going to clear this for a moment. And I'm going to run the command npm start and this command inside of the react app will basically just start our application. And if I open up my Chrome, this uh, the react app will run on the localhost 3000. As you can see right here, it will automatically generate. And whenever we run the command, it already builds a simple example application that already comes with the boilerplate, right? So but the thing is, we're not going to use it, you can see this is what it comes with. Um, we're not going to use this, we're just going to delete um, some of the files that generated this, right? So the files we're not going to be using are the app.test over here, the index.css, the logo and the setup tests. So I recommend deleting them because they're going to be useless for this project. So I'm just going to go ahead and move to trash. And that's fine. And then we need to delete some stuff. For example, um, the CSS over here, it was, it was used to generate that the web page, we're not going to be using it. And on the index.js, we're also not going to be using the index.css that we deleted. And finally, in our app.js, which is kind of like the entry point of our application, um, we will need to delete like most of this over here, just until here and also delete this over here. So now we just have an empty web page, let me open this up over here. And let me refresh the page, you'll see that it will be just a blank web page. So what exactly do we want to do here? Well, what, I'm, what I was thinking about this project is we we might want to have like just just have a empty web page at least for now and just display all the posts as a list here at the center and you can just scroll down and see every single post right and then if you want you can click on a post and it will bring you to a web page that will show you that specific post and you that there you can like comment on the post maybe if i add like the liking feature in the future um you can do that too but that's kind of the idea that i have right so to make that work we need to actually start by um, preparing our API request, right, we need to make an API request to our own API, so that um, it shows all the all the different posts that we have. And to do that, we need to access the get endpoint that we created over here in our routes for the posts, we need to this just returns as a JSON, the list of all the posts that we have. And we need to make an, a request to this endpoint, because that's exactly what we need in our react app. Okay, guys, so to start um, building out our application, we need to set up the the API requests, right? Because that's basically what we're going to be doing over here, we're going to set up um, an API request to our API, and specifically to the endpoint where we receive the list of all the posts, right? So to do so, I'm going to be installing a, a library called Axios, 
which uh, is extremely important. It's really cool. Um, it just allows you to make API requests very easily. So if you're a beginner, um, you can either use the fetch API, which already comes with JavaScript or install Axios. I would recommend installing Axios because it makes more sense in my opinion for uh, beginners who are trying to build a full stack application using React or just normal JavaScript. So when it finishes installing, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so as you can see, um, it finished it, it finished installing. So I'll just um, close this tab on my terminal and let's start building our application. So to do so, I'm gonna come here at the top and I'm gonna import um, Axios from the library Axios. And Axios is actually has some pretty simple syntax to make, for example, a get request. All we have, to, like technically, all we have to do is we just have to run Axios.get. However, let's think about this. We want to run this request um, whenever the page refreshes, right? Or whenever we enter on our website, because currently our website just has like an, an, a black and blank page. But we want to fetch all the lists of posts similar to how Instagram works. You go on the website and automatically when you enter on it, it already has the list of all the uh, posts that Instagram has, right? So to make this functionality work, we have to import a hook from React um, called the use effect hook. So use effect and it will allow us to run a function immediately when the page re-renders. So I'm going to import from React like this. And I'm going to come here and I'm just going to run use effect like this. And, and the use effect is actually pretty simple because all you have to do is you need to run over, you have to write the logic you want to run immediately when the page re-renders inside of this. And at the end, you just have to pass a list of dependencies or states in this case, which will trigger um, like the function to run again. In this case, you can just ignore this if you're not used to the use effect. I also have a video on this, but if you're not used to it, just ignore this, just put it as a comma and an empty array like this, and it should run once when you refresh the page. And inside of here, we can put the logic behind making the request. So what exactly is the logic we wanna write here? Well, it's just the get request that generates the data, right? So we can come over here and say axios.get, and instead of here, we have to pass a URL which corresponds to the um, URL for our API request. So how exactly would we do this? Well, let's come here into our routes, the post route. You see that this endpoint for the get, which is the one we're trying to run, it, it exists under the localhost 3001 because it is the kind of the the port that we put here slash posts, right? Because this is the route that we set over here. So let's test to see if that's working because um, we tested this in the last video, but we're currently not even running our server. So we need to run our API to make to make the request, right? So to do that, we need to come over here and open a new terminal and then change the directory to the server. And then all we have to do is we need to run npm start and our server as we th talked about in the previous videos should run and it should be working, right? We should be able to come over here, open up the um, localhost 3001 slash posts like this, and it should um, just show the list of all the posts. And let's see if it's, yeah, uh, this was the ones where we created in the last video as examples, but you can see it's working perfectly, right? So the URL we put in the Axios request is the URL for this endpoint right here. So you can just come over here I'm just going to close this. You need to leave both the server and React running. And you just paste this right over here. And this should work. And over here, right next to it, um, and this should work. But now we have to tell what, like our, our code, what we want to do after we receive the data. So since this returns a promise, all we have to do is just say dot then. And over here, we put an anonymous function which runs after we receive the data so that we, ha we have this asynchronously, right? We wait for the data to be done, to for the request to be done, and then we run this function inside of here. And the data that we receive should be stored over here in, as the argument to this function. So all you have to do is grab an argument called response like this. And now if you wanna see the data, just as an example, I'll console log response so you guys can see if this is actually working. So let's test to see if this will work. Let's come over here to application and let's refresh this. And it's giving me some errors. Um, let me see what, okay, that actually wasn't anything. I just um, re-ran re the server. And let's see if I refresh the page, um, the console log should display a response. So let's do this. Let's come over here, um, open the inspect, um, go to the console log and let's refresh the page. As you can see, 
um, it shows us an error. And the reason why it shows an error is extremely important because it is a concept that a lot of people uh, mistake in the beginning, which is basically we need to set course to our application so that it accepts um, requests uh, coming from the same origin, right? Which means that um, we want to set, um, we want to whitelist our own computer, so our API running our computer, um, to make the request. That's kind of uh, the simplistic view of what course is. And to fix this issue, all you have to do is you need to come to your application, your server, and you need to navigate towards the server. So I need to open a new terminal over here, change my directory to server. As you can see, I'm going to clear everything and then just in install into it um, the, the package course, the dependency course. And this course over here, it's pretty simple that you will only run one. You have to write only one line of code. I'm just going to close this terminal. And all you have to do is you need to come here at the top and import um, course from um, the library course. And then you just have to use this middleware. It's actually a middleware. So you need to write over here course and it will automatically whitelist your API so that the connection actually works and you're able to make an API request that exists in your computer um, from a React app that is also running on your computer. So let's test right now. Let's open the console log over here. And let's see if it's working now. So let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we received um, some data back, right? Remember, we make the get request. And instead of this, it contains a few, uh, it's an object containing a few properties. More specifically, it contains a property called a key called data. And instead of it, it contains an array containing all the like the data that we received from the API request. So the connection is working perfectly. And now we just have to um, do something with the data that we received, right? Currently, we're just console logging it. And if we want to see the data specifically, we need to access the data instead of the response. So let's check to see if it's um, if, if it only shows the data now. So let's see the console log you can see just shows an array containing the data, right? So it's working perfectly. And that's that's great. So now we want to display this in our screen. How do we do that? Well, to do that, all we have to do is we have to create a state. So we need to import the use state hook. And this state comes here at the top. It just holds, it's just a list containing all the posts that we receive from the API request. So to create that state, we just have to come over here and say const, then list of posts and a function to change that list of posts. So set list of posts, something like this, and set this equal to use state. Um, use state. And then um, this obviously will be an array because um, the API request returns a list and we just have to set it as empty in the beginning. And now all we have to do is whenever we receive the response, we have to set list of posts equal to the response dot data. And now we have a state which contains the response from the API request, which means we can use that to display the posts or whatever data we receive into our application. And to do that, if you're not used to this, um, then it will might seem a bit weird, especially in the beginning. However, if you want to navigate throughout a list that you have, which is a state or like an in, inside of react, and you just want to display the data inside of that list, all you have to do is you need to grab the list. So list of posts, and then use the map function to map through every single element. So all I, what I like to do is I like to, I like to create this function over here. And let me just refresh this. So, um, so we can see it clearly. And over here, we have a, a function, right? And we need to grab inside of here, two arguments to the function. The first one would be the value. And the second one would be the in, the key, right? And what this means is um, when it, the key represents the index in the array, in which the element exists and the value is just the element in itself. So if you're not used to the map function, definitely recommend checking it out. However, it's 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 pretty self explanatory in the sense that um, we have a list of four posts and value will just navigate through each element in that list and value would represent the object containing the post right as you can see right here in our console log. Um, we're able to see that it's their objects, each element in the array are object containing um, different things inside of it. So now that we have that done, Let's come over here and just say what we need, to, what we want to write um, whenever for each element, right? So to do that, I'll just come over here and return a div, which means basically that for each element in the list, I want to return a div. So let me at least for now, just as an example, show you guys what I mean by that is, for example, if I wanted to loop through each element in the list and just display a div containing the, the title 
sort of like the title for the post, I can just come over here and say value, which is an object, and then title. And if we take a look at our code, now it should display a list containing all the titles, right? And this is great because this is how we can individually uh, access and render um, elements in the list, however, showing them differently. So that's, that's a great aspect of React. Now, I decided not to focus a lot on um, CSS in this, and I won't. What I want to do is I want to write the whole JSX and write the, the UI aspect of it and then write the CSS on my own and just show you guys the CSS and also obviously link the CSS in the description so that we don't spend a lot of time working on it. So what I want to do is uh, for each element in the list, I want to return a div and the div will have a class name of um, something like post. And then inside of it, we're going to divide it into two divs. So let's just come over here and say div and close div like this. Um, and then over here, we'll just pass a class name again. And this will be the title. So let's just divide it into two parts, which is the title and the body. So let's come over here and say title. And inside of this, there will be actually the value dot title. So that's great, right? But then we also want to divide this into another div, which is going to contain the body. So let's say body like this. And Instead of here, we're not going to display the value dot title. We're actually going to display um, one thing over here, which is basically this, this the text post. So let's say value dot. Um, I think it's post text, something like that, right? It needs to be exactly how we wrote in our database. So I I think it is post text. And finally, I want to add some footer where I'm going to add the date in which the post was created, and I'm going I'm also going to add the username. So let's just say for now just username. And let's change this to footer. So right now there won't be any styling, but um, I just want to show you guys how this will look. It will display all three pieces of information. And yeah, as you can see for each element, it displays three pieces of information, which are the title, the post text and the, the user who wrote this, right? And, and now I'm going to write the CSS and be back in a second. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I finished the CSS. And uh, again, the CSS will be all in the description if you want to check it out. Um, I don't want to spend time going over it. But basically, if I go over here, you'll see this is what we have our simple um, post like each post is displayed. I think it looks nice. I'm not that good with <laughs> styling. However, this is what I came up with. And you can change it to whatever you want. However, I think this actually looks nice. So we have our title over here at the top for the post, then we have the post which obviously for now we only have like um, <laughs> a sentence, but usually this should be something big, like a quote or something like that. And and you can see that I put some effects like you can hover on it and it gives like a box shadow and also the cursor change to pointer. Why does the cursor change to pointer? Basically, what I'm thinking is you can click on the post and when you click on the post, it's going to send you to a specific route because we're going to be using React Auto DOM. And when you click on that route, um, you're going to be able to see the post individually. Um, that's going to be something for the next video. But what I'm thinking for now is, is in the next video, I'm going to be going over just how to create the form where we're going to be able to create the the, the post. Um, so make like the post uh, request to our database. And in the third, like in the next next video, we're going to go over how to specify routes, um, like each individual route or each individual uh, URL for each post, right, because we're going to be doing it by based on the ID. And that's something that I find really interesting, we'll have different um, routes in our application that are that only show the information comment section and amount of likes for each post specifically. Um, some of you guys have been requesting me to add like authentication, authorization, um, registration, that kind of stuff to the series. I am not 100% sure if I I'm going to do that because I have other videos going over the topic. And I think it will take a lot of time of the series where I plan this series to be focusing on other aspects that aren't really um, touched upon by many YouTubers. So maybe that's something that will come up in the like in the, later on in the series. However, for now, these are the main points that we're going to address. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I'm not trying to make it long. I'm trying to keep it short. So um, that's why I'm not at making it an hour long. So if you're enjoying the new format, um, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, um, subscribe if you're not subscribed because it will massively help the channel grow. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I see you guys next time.